Well, welcome back to our journey of learning, discovering, and using spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are abilities given to Christians by the Holy Spirit that, when used properly, build up the church in size and maturity. Today, we're going to be talking about the spiritual gifts of speaking and interpreting in tongues. You can see these spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 8. Paul writes, To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. And then he hops down a little bit further. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. These spiritual gifts would fall into the category of charismatic spiritual gifts. And if you have not yet seen the video I made on the overview of charismatic gifts, pause this video and watch that one first because that video will give you a framework in which I'm going to teach on these particular spiritual gifts here. But if you have seen that video, then let's explore the spiritual gifts of praying and interpreting tongues. So a lot of people ask the question, what is speaking in tongues? Well, let me give you a definition of the spiritual gift. Speaking in tongues is praying or speaking in a language that is unknown or unknown to you. Sometimes when people are filled with the Holy Spirit, they pray or they speak uh, in a language that uh, they do not naturally understand, or they pray with utterances that nobody understands. Well, that's where the spiritual gift of interpretation comes along. Those with the spiritual gift of interpreting tongues will be able in that moment to understand what that person is speaking or praying, and then they will be able to clearly communicate that message or that prayer to those who are around at the time. So here's the definition of interpreting tongues. It is the God-given ability to understand and share what was spoken in tongues with those present. The God-given ability to understand and share what was spoken in tongues with those present. Now, most of the time, people's views on these spiritual gifts are driven by their experiences. Their good experiences, their bad experiences, or their lack of experiences. But I don't want to talk about that today. What I want to do is explore what the Bible teaches on these spiritual gifts and let that inform our thoughts and actions. Now, it needs to be said that there are brothers and sisters in Christ who have different theologies on these spiritual gifts. And the reason they have different theologies is, is because they place greater emphasis on different Bible verses that talk about these spiritual gifts. So my aim in this video is to teach you what the pastors at Valley Brook think is a biblical view and practice of these spiritual gifts. And my hope is that we would humbly engage in conversation with brothers and sisters in Christ that have different theologies on these spiritual gifts so that we may sharpen one another, perhaps learn from one another, and grow in unity and love in the church. Speaking in tongues is something that we first see in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit filled the apostles at Pentecost. Filled with the Spirit, the, the apostles began to speak in tongues in languages that they did not know, but that the crowd knew. Well, naturally, the crowd was very curious, and they began asking, what's going on here? Well, Peter stood up, and he addressed the crowd. He explained to them what was going on, and then he told them about Jesus and invited them to believe in Jesus. 3,000 people said yes to Jesus that day and became baptized. So what we see in Acts chapter 2 at the first time, at the first coming of speaking in tongues, is that curiosity led to clarity as Peter addressed the crowd, and as a result, the church grew in size. Well, fast forward uh, some time and uh, move to a different city, and Christians are speaking in tongues, but it's not in the same way as Acts chapter 2. They're not speaking in a language that other people know. They're just speaking in utterances that nobody knows. Now, this speaking in tongues has created confusion in the churches. Instead of curiosity leading to clarity, it leads to confusion. And that confusion leads to immaturity. Well, Paul is not okay with this, and so what he does is he addresses the gift of speaking in tongues in 1 Corinthians chapters 12, 13, and 14. And in doing that, he takes away their confusion and he enables these spiritual gifts to lead to clarity so that the church can grow in size and maturity. Maturity. 
And so what does Paul say to them that leads to clarity so that the church can grow in size and maturity? Well, he teaches them two things about the spiritual gifts and two ways to use the spiritual gifts. So the first thing that Paul teaches them about the spiritual gifts is that these spiritual gifts of speaking and interpreting tongues are given to some. There are some people in Christian churches that will say that speaking in tongues is necessary to prove that you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. In other words, every Christian should speak in tongues. But we don't believe that that's biblical here at Valley Brook. What we believe is that these spiritual gifts are only given to some Christians. If you've said yes to following Jesus as your Savior and Lord, then you have the Holy Spirit living in you and you can rest assured that you are a Christian. We see this biblically in 1 Corinthians 12 verse 30. Paul asks these rhetorical questions. Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? And of course, the answer he's getting at here is no, not everyone speaks in tongues. So the first thing that we can learn about these spiritual gifts is that they are given to some. The second thing we can learn about these spiritual gifts is that they are good. You see, sometimes when we are confused about something or don't understand something or think it's a little outside the box, we want it to stop and we want it to go away. Well, Paul does not have that reaction when it comes to speaking in tongues. In fact, Paul elevates the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues, but as he elevates it, he gives it biblical boundaries. In other words, Paul's saying the problem is not with the spiritual gift, the problem is with immature believers. And so he writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, starting in verse 39, So my brothers earnestly desire to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues, but all things should be done decently and in order. Well, that leads us to this side where we learn about two ways that these spiritual gifts should be used. And the first thing that we can see in Scripture is that these spiritual gifts of speaking and interpreting tongues should be used together when others are around. Paul writes, in 1 Corinthians 14, starting in verse 27, If any speak in a tongue, let there be only two, or at most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church, and speak to himself and to God. If you have the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues, make sure that someone is there to interpret if you pray when others are around. If no one is there to interpret, then make sure that you just pray to God or pray to yourself in a way that nobody else can hear. Now, the person who wrote this, Paul, had the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues. So he understands the importance of the spiritual gift and he understands the importance of having biblical boundaries. He writes about his own experiences in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 19. Nevertheless, in church, I would rather speak five words with my mind in order to instruct others than 10,000 words in a tongue. This verse right here is why you will not hear speaking in tongues in our large Sunday morning gatherings. In our large Sunday morning gatherings, we highly value peace, order, and clarity. We want everybody, mature believers, young believers, and unbelievers, to clearly hear the worship and understand the teachings of the Bible without confusion and without chaos. Now, there may be times in smaller circles of Christians where speaking in tongues will be appropriate if there's someone who can interpret. The Bible makes it clear that those times can build up the church in maturity. So if you have the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues, pray for somebody to have the spiritual gift to interpret. And if you sense that there is no one to interpret, then again, pray to God or pray quietly in a way that nobody else can hear. The next thing that we see about using the gifts is that these gifts should be used in love. Paul says, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. The next time you hear this Bible verse quoted at a wedding, you can think to yourself, hey, that's about the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues. We often skip over that and just focus on the word love. 
But here Paul says, if you have the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues, make sure you use it in love. Now, one way that I've seen people with the spiritual gift use it in love is by being very considerate of the unbeliever and the young believer that, that may be present in the room. Paul says, for you may be giving thanks well enough in tongues, but the other person is not being built up. A very loving question to ask is, would speaking and interpreting tongues lead to clarity when it comes to unbelievers or young believers so that they can grow and mature in their faith? Or would it leave them with a sense of confusion and chaos? That's a very loving question to ask if you have the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues because it's putting the other people first. I'm very excited to continue to explore these charismatic gifts. Thank you for your ministry at Valley Brook Church as we help people to know and share the life-changing love of God.